Please listen carefully. Well, hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summer McKay. And we're part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to one focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy, even Christy and I need a lift-worthy podcast. Today is Tuesday, the 8th of December, 2020. I, I feel so silly constantly talking about my confusion on time. But I literally have no idea what day of the week it is right now. I mean, were it not for the fact that we have our tech meeting in 25 minutes, I don't even, yeah. What is this world coming to, Christy? (laughs) I don't know. I really think, because I know that both of us were kind of railing this morning on our pre-pod check-in. And I really, (laughs) yeah. I really think there's something about just the ongoing stress of this uncertain world that we live in. And a couple weeks ago, there was, I felt a bit of elation at the idea that the vaccine was just around the corner. It was coming and okay, so we don't get Thanksgiving this year, but we're going to get it next year. Oh, we've got the holidays. We've got Christmas, Hanukkah coming up now. I think this week is the start of Hanukkah. A couple weeks from now is Christmas and then New Year's and it's going to all be fresh. But then it hit me how long of this current moment we're still going to be in, at least for me. It's looking like another six months before we will really have this under control. And it's raging all over the country. And that is a little bit discouraging. Anyway, so it's ups and downs, right? We have to ride the waves, acknowledge where we're at, yet our feelings, you know, let them be heard. And then buckle down and just move forward. Yeah. I had an interesting conversation with a colleague yesterday or the day before. I don't know. At some point in the <laughs> last 11 years. And <laughs> the conversation was, what recommendations would you or I, Christy or I, have for resolutions, for New Year's resolutions? Because in this, in this world where there's so much uncertainty... You know, it's difficult to say I'm going to go climb Mount Kilimanjaro next year because you simply you simply can't guarantee that that is a reasonable resolution. And I think one of the the real keys for all of us as we approach this next year is that we resolve to self-care. We resolve to care of one another and that we sort of set aside the lofty goals of expansion or travel or adventure and instead like dig deep into the lofty goals of love and generosity and innovation and learning because while we are stuck in our apartments or stuck at home there is a huge amount of expansion that can be done it just it just looks different you know what this kind of reminds me of summers i don't know if you read this but do you remember michael crichton's book travels well i don't remember that book but i do obviously love it Yeah, so this is a a sort of a personal journey book. It's kind of a a memoir of sorts. And he it's a a series of different like articles, I think, that got put together. He tells the story of when he did climb Mount Kilimanjaro, which is part of what inspired my going with my friends to Mount Kilimanjaro. Right. But then at the end of the book, he writes about the most essential travels that he made, especially towards the later part of his life were more internal and more personal, focusing in on himself, meditation, and kind of coming back to his source, to his center. So I think what you're suggesting is maybe there's some energy we can focus in on conquering. I mean, maybe that's the wrong metaphor, but on... Yeah, just expanding. Reattaching. Reattaching. Yeah. Yeah. Reassembling with ourselves. Reassembling with ourselves. And also our relationships. And that's the other thing. I, I read a uh, really interesting or I listened to a really interesting article over the weekend from the New York Times about the concept of trees and forests is like just sort of the evolution of our understanding of how forests are really and trees are actually interconnected with each other. And that the relationships between different species and different trees 
are profound. And the old idea that a tree will survive best if it has the most sun and is unfettered access to soil and sun is really not that true because there's so much sharing that happens beneath the ground through the fungal networks that connect life Mm -hmm. that if you take that all away and you don't have those kinds of interconnected species, interconnected soils (laughs) and fungi and all of this, it just, everything doesn't do as well. And so we, we are more than the sum of our parts. Right. Right. Well, and I think you're right. Like returning to relationships and the value we have to one another and what we can do to make this world a better place, even from the comfort of our fuzzy socks. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But speaking of fuzzy socks, what did you sit and read while wearing your fuzzy socks on the Optimist Daily today that got you inspired? Well, I guess, you know, it's quite cold here. So I was drawn to an article that focused on the Arctic. And the headline reads, Bank of America officially says no to financing Arctic drilling. And I thought this was an important story to broadcast here today because I think that this is an important signal and the signaling in our financial institutions of the unappealing nature of continuing to fund and finance drilling in our wildlife, in our backyard for oil and gas. So the Bank of America is, is just the latest major U.S. financial institution to make the declaration that they will no longer finance oil and gas exploration in the Arctic. And I'm not sure if they're financing oil and gas exploration in other parts of our country, right. but the no Arctic drilling policies are partly driven by consumer demand and a growing feeling among more people in the country that that's not the direction we want to go. We want to actually turn away from fossil fuels towards other things. But I think it also is a signal that it's not really a lucrative, it's not a good financial play either, even though they're pushing right now and the oil drillers are very interested in opening up the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge for exploration. Institutions are saying maybe not so much. Right. Um, I think I think what the financial institutions are saying both not so much because I think everybody's recognizing well not everybody but a lot of a lot of organizations are recognizing that a long play is a more financially sustainable position than the short play right mm-hmm. we're kind of done shorting the earth <laughs> and, yeah. yeah and I think that what this is demonstrating is that an investment in some longer term diverse energy efforts is a better financial play so Certainly politics aside or whatnot, which can all play into this conversation, is is just one relevant sort of data point. But the, the real data point is, as goes the market, so goes the world. And the market is recognizing that the world is a priority. The world is a stakeholder. Our Earth is a stakeholder in the long play of financial viability. So yeah. I'm proud of Bank of America. I know that you know, pressure to other banks and other financial institutions are out there. Everybody get on board and let's invest in diversified green energy solutions for the future, as well as developing green and circular products for the future. (laughs) Okay, well, before you go there, let me just mention that Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Chase and Wells Fargo and Citibank have all also made this announcement. So major U.S. financial institutions are all saying, no, thanks. This is not something we want to continue to invest in. Yeah. Other things that maybe ought to be invested in and will be invested in include investigating how bioplastics might take over something, right? Right. Why should be awkward out as all hell? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So yes, exactly. As as a furtherance to the conversation about changing the investment strategy and recognizing that investing in sustainable future My headline reads, new durable bioplastic can withstand hot food and beverages. Now, let's be honest. (laughs) I have Tupperware from my grandmother that is probably 40 years old. They can be microwaved and they can be boiled. And although I'm not sure they can sustain the toddler that I have who likes to toss them around the kitchen, that is part of what plastic really has going for it is this tremendous withstanding of various temperatures and abuse. 
Well, as we look at bioplastics for the future and more ecological choice as we reduce our use of single-use plastics, what is exciting is that the University of Akron has come up with a new bioplastic that could be used as sustainable packaging for hot takeaway food. Now, obviously, the takeout market's pretty big these days, <laughs> so this is really, really important. Basically, the team took a common form of bioplastic, which is called polyactic acid, PLA, and it's cheap and popular choice for things like packaging plastic bottles. Its main weakness, though, is that it deforms when exposed to high temperatures, right? We've all seen bioplastics that if they get too near your stove, they melt, right? Well, Dr. Shi Qing Wang, hmm, we'll just say Dr. Wang, I apologize for not saying your name properly, has participated in a new study that has solved this problem. They've reimagined the complex molecular structure underlying the PLAs and liken it to a bunch of spaghetti with chain-like molecules making up the plastic representing individual noodles. Basically, they've tweaked the way those crystals are formed, limiting them to tiny, teeny, tiny sizes, and that chain work of basically a highly interwoven chain work of these noodles enables them to produce this plastic that is, although clear, it is also heat resistant. So withstanding boiling water without shrinking, degrading, or turning opaque. Now, this is just one of those technologies that is in development that recognizes that we have to take a bite out of our plastic, you know, crisis. And this is just one part of the plastic crisis menacing our oceans. But it is fantastic to see that there is innovation in finding ways to have more sustainable and durable goods. The tricky thing is, and part of why I don't, you know, my Tupperware for my grandmother that's 40 years old, like that is, <laughs> that's had a useful life, right? That is, <laughs> that is not something that was single use. But the issue with single use plastics and not biodegradable or bioplastics is really a concern, especially, you know, as we go into continued takeout, everyone sees we need more bioplastics. Well done, University of Akron engineers and scientists. Thank you for this. And we will keep an eye on it to see how this grows. All right. So other things on the Optimist Daily today, there's an article about how Jupiter and Saturn will appear to collide during this winter solstice. And that'll be a spectacular thing to watch for all of us um, sky watchers. Australia is going to begin a nationwide koala count to assess the population health of these adorable little uh, cuddly bears. <laughs> There's a little pygmy possum that was found after there was fears that they were wiped out by bushfires. I think that's also from Australia, all those Australian yeah. critters. An article about how to encourage yourself to move into a morning person. Early bird gets the worm so to speak. So uh, that's an interesting Do not one. let my daughter read that article <laughs> because 4 a.m. is early enough for mommy. <laughs> yeah. There's a company that's using beer and chips to slash emissions. Good job. There's a study that shows that speaking with infants may change their brains and how important it is for us to talk to our babies, even if they can't talk back. Seven ways to professionally decline an unnecessary Zoom meeting. I think all of us have that feeling lately that we're working from home of just feeling spread thin in terms of our digital virtual meetings. So yes, even virtual meetings can be declined in a professional way. And finally, there is a new bill that's just passed the House that protects big cats across the United States. This is backed by Carol Baskin, the owner of Big Cat Rescue and the star, one of the stars, controversially, of Tiger King, which got us all hooked earlier in the pandemic. And that is it for today's Optimist Daily. <laughs> all right, everybody, as you can hear, my family is coming home, the baby's home, the nanny's here. So I'm going to thank everybody for listening to the Optimist Daily Update. We will continue to share positive solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in this changing world and ensure it is changed for the good. Con Consider becoming an emissary on the OptimistDaily.com for $5 a month. Let's keep the Optimist Daily free to all who need it, supported by those who can. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. 